New York Stock Exchange has a new president. Stacey Cunningham will be the first female leader of the exchange in its 226-year history. Joining us now in a CNBC exclusive uh, is the NYSE's incoming president, Stacey Cunningham, along with our own Bob Bassani at Post 9. Stacey, welcome. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's an amazing story. My summer intern, 94. Yes, it seems like a really long time ago, <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's true. Floor clerk. Uh, eventually a specialist. Yes. I think I saw you made a market in Hershey's and some other names. I did. So you know the floor well. I do. I do. It's home. I kind of grew up down here, cut my teeth. And, and now you're and now you're going to run this. Yeah, it's a full circle story for me. What, what to you is important right now as you as you take this next chapter forward for the exchange? I think it's important to me that we, we continue to maintain the same goal and mission that we've had for the past 226 years. And that's helping great companies raise capital, helping investors find opportunities so they can plan for their future. And that's our goal. It looks different. It's evolved. We've done a lot. Uh, we've done that in different ways over a long period of time when you look at asset classes that have evolved and, and new types of listings. But it's the same mission that, that underpins everything we do. You compete fiercely with NASDAQ for listings. That's a long and, yes. and respected rivalry between the two of you. But I wonder if you could comment on the IPO business because mm -hmm. we're all trying to figure out how to get more companies to go public. They're locked up, many of the unicorns locked up uh, in private equity. We'd like to see more of them go public. I know the NYSE would. Well, what are your thoughts on getting people, yeah. getting people more interested in listing? Yeah, we absolutely want to see companies continue to access the public markets and have the same level of great success they've had for so for so long. Uh, and I think a lot of that comes down to making sure that we have a regulatory environment that ensures the U.S. continues to be the source uh, of capital for, for large companies. We do have a strong pipeline coming up in June, so I, I wouldn't make it sound too dire. I mean, there are a lot of companies that are planning to access the markets, but we want to make sure we haven't gone too far to a market structure that has created an environment that's good for big companies and big investors. We want to be able to welcome companies of, of sizes or smaller sizes earlier in their life. But we all know that these companies, these small companies, bitterly complain about the regulatory burden of going public. They simply can't afford the lawyers and the issues involved in doing that. Is there a simpler way to figure out with less burdens to get companies to come public? Yeah, we spent a lot of time down in Washington working with the administration on changes that we think will make sense, uh, whether it be disclosures or other things. How do we get the right-sized regulation so it's not too burdensome to access public markets? There's a lot of private capital out there, too. I mean, they have options. We want to make sure they see the value of the public markets and they choose to, choose to access that liquidity. Because if they wait too long, it means that the smaller investors aren't getting that benefit of their growth. We when see that this with the unicorns growth. now. Yes, exactly, exactly. So we're, we're very focused on that. It's certainly going to be one of my, my primary goals. Stacey, I wanted to ask you about the rise of electronic trading machines, algorithms, and what that means. I mean, we always sort of come back to this question, what it means for the floor of the stock exchange. Yeah. A lot of people here are happy because you were a floor clerk, but just yeah. how has that changed your business? It, it means wonderful things for the floor of the stock exchange. Like any industry, technology has allowed us to scale what we can provide. So the team down here, they're continuing to trade and provide that same level of value they've given to our issuers for, for centuries, but they're doing it with technology. They're doing it with scale, and, and that's no different than other industries, and it means they can do more in the future. What about new technologies like cryptocurrencies? Mm -hmm. are, are we eventually going to see the NICE participate in some sort of trading platform? The, the, the crypto landscape has evolved so rapidly over just the past year. It's, it's really fascinating. We were an early entry into that space with our small investment in Coinbase, just so that we would have a closeness to it and we could watch it. When we got directly involved, it's been more on the data side. We've worked closely with Blockstream and in providing uh, in, you know, market data around the, the crypto uh, currency. But I think that space is going to continue to evolve. We need to figure out what the right regulatory framework is for it, uh, and we'll, we'll be closely watching it. What are you going to do with Coinbase? Are you going to help them go public? What, 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 what? There's something that's going to happen here with this yeah, investment. Yeah, I think there's You're, a lot that's happening. They're a big happening. little e bug in your ear about what's going on in the crypto space. I know they're really help, helping you understand what's going on, what, what's going yeah, to happen Yeah, I mean, with I, that I think the space is rapidly evolving, and, and we'll see where it goes. You know, I think there's still, there's still a lot to happen there. 40% of the volume of all trading in the United States occurs on dark pools still. Mm -hmm. uh, is that a concern of yours? And what can you do to bring more of this trading into what is we call the lit space, the yeah. regular exchange space, NASDAQ, 
NYS, NYSE mm -hmm. uh, occupies. Yeah, the, the public quote is so important for all those retail investors that are going on and looking at what's the value of a stock. We want to encourage them to want to participate in the markets. So having a lit public quote is, is really important. The markets are more fragmented. That's, that's the way the regulatory environment has evolved over the past 10 years. It's not so surprising that you've seen a lot of change uh, with that. We think that the markets operate still better than any other markets in the world. So we don't want to get too crazy with saying things things are broken. But whatever there's room for improvement, we're going to focus on it. And we're going to work toward getting the best market structure for issuers and investors. That's who we're here for. It seems like the SEC is quite happy with the current system, though, the current somewhat fragmented system that's out there. They have said before it seems to be working OK. Are you happy with the way the current market structure exists? Is there too many exchanges? Is there too many dark pools? Do you disagree with I think I think the level of fragmentation has gone too far. And you could say, hey, you guys operate a number of exchanges. How could you say that? But but I think that that level of fragmentation has just gone a little bit too far, and we could swing the pendulum back a little bit. Some of the proposals that the SEC has put out, we're in favor of uh, driving some change. We've been lobbying for it since 2014 when ICE came into this business and talked about the equity markets and the complexity there. How could we, how could we help simplify the markets so investors understand them? So we are supportive of change. We just want to make sure that the issuer voice is part of that change. I think the big question on everybody's mind, and you can hear the monitors up, everybody's listening to us on the <laughs> floor. Let, let's As ask the question. On a seven second delay. Let's ask the question, uh, what's your plans for the floor of the New York Stock Exchange? Are we still going to be sitting here five years from now on the floor, and will it still exist? Bob, I love this place. I started my career on the trading floor. I grew up down here. I, I, uh, I certainly hope we are sitting here in five years and celebrating the many successes that we have have had and continue to have. We have big plans. But can I follow up on that, Stacey? Is it necessary to have a floor? I mean, in 94, when you were an intern, this was a very different place. Yeah. Certainly weren't a lot of tourists coming through here yeah. the way there are now. Is it really still necessary to actually have a physical space to trade? It's, you can trade without a trading floor. I mean, we, there are plenty of other markets that do that. So it's not necessary to have a floor. It's more value for our listed companies that we can provide them. We trade with less volatility because of the brokers down here and the DMMs that are representing our trading floor. This community provides provides value to their customers, both institutional investors as well as the listed companies that chose NYC to, as their home. They have that, the floor provides that value that you can't get anywhere else. 1967, first female gets a board seat, uh, on the, or gets a seat here on yes. the New York Stock Exchange. And now, finally, 2018, we get a female CEO. How has, how has this business changed for women? It still feels like there are very few of them. Yeah, there are. There are very few women. There are very few women in finance. There are very few women in technology. And we are squarely at the cross sections of finance and technology. So it's a male dominated environment. And, you know, that, that hasn't changed quite as rapidly as some other industries have changed. Why? Uh, it's not something that's been top of mind for me because I've just sort of approached my career as what, what do we want to do for the business? How do we want to grow that? Uh, when you look at our organization, I see a very different profile. And that's because we prioritize, how do we get diversity of thought? sitting around our management team throughout our organization. And if you prioritize diversity of thought, you're going to find that you have a diverse team that sits there. So when I look at ICE, it's a woman that leads ICE Data Services, one of our largest businesses. It's uh, our general counsel at NYC is a woman. Our head of uh, ICE Futures uh, Clearing is a woman. So we, there are plenty of women throughout our organization. And you know, I, I think that's an example hopefully we can set for others. And the head of the NASDAQ. Yes, Your yes. Your chief competitor, Adina Friedman, who is mm -hmm. well known in this space. So two women. Maybe you can bring the running. women's bathroom a little closer to the trading floor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, the, the journal does a nice history on the bathroom. There and is what a Muriel history Siebert there. did to what was there once a phone a booth. There is Yeah. <laughs> I, I rotated around that phone booth a couple times. <laughs> what would you say? You talk about private capital being a competitor to the, mm -hmm. the new listings business, but how would you characterize NASDAQ as a competitor, speaking of Adina? Yeah, I mean, there's a longstanding competition between NASDAQ and NYSE. We offer a slightly different value proposition the way we approach what we can provide to our issues and creating and bringing together the largest companies in the world and creating a network that they can leverage when they're looking to promote their own businesses is really important to us in front and center. We used to call it the tech-heavy NASDAQ, which I guess is still true, but you've stolen or taken some large tech names. Do you see that as something that continues? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. When we look at, at, at the, you know, last year, we raised the majority of proceeds in, in, in tech IPOs. That's certainly a trend that I expect to continue. Let me just ask you about market data fees. Uh, enormous amounts of data comes out of this building and you sell it mm -hmm. to the public. CNBC buys yes. the data feeds that crawl down there we buy from uh, from you. Uh, it's well known that that's a big growing part of the business. You've been raising the fees 
And Wall Street's been pushing back against that. They've had some problems with how aggressively you've been raising these fees with NASDAQ uh, as well. Do you think it's a, it's a fair proposition as a company that, that used to be a mutual company, a private company, to keep raising the fees on Wall Street? I think, I think Bob, what's not entirely understood is that those conversations that we're having are tied together. The fragmentation that we talked about just a couple of minutes ago has been a primary driver of why the value of market data has evolved in the U.S. equity space. You need to stitch together the market and understand what are the prices and all the different venues out there. So market data has changed as the regulatory landscape has changed. Uh, data in, at, at a higher level is in a very important business for, for ICE as customers are consuming data differently and they're trying to uh, manage their risk using, using data. The U.S. equity piece that you talked about is a very small, small piece of that overall ICE data landscape. Yeah, but market data overall is about 40% of ICE's overall revenue. So yeah, not it, it, U.S. equity data. Yes. Very small slice. It's, it, my point is, I think you know what I'm saying, it's a, it's a very important part of the business for the, all of the exchanges now. And it's growing, and the street pushes back when you raise the prices. Yeah, people, people are very that. surprised. That crawl down there, we're paying you. Yeah, crawl. people are very surprised when they realize how small uh, that, that slice of the data business it is. Okay. Well, congratulations. And as one of your house guests, we'll be looking for you on the floor. Thank you. Thank you so much. Congratulations. The, everyone thanks. down here, is, the floor is very happy. You were the logical choice for this role. Oh, thanks, you Bob. Were. I appreciate it. Stacey Cunningham. Thank you. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.